let's have a look at the microbiological hazards. Okay, so control measures for the hazards include keeping food at the danger zone, which is between 5 and 63 degrees C. Minimise time at room temperature. Remove moisture. Add salt or sugar, vinegar or preservatives. Fermentation, which reduces the pH because obviously bacteria and microbiological uh, entities do not like low pH. And destroy, for example, by heat processing or cooking or steaming. So food vehicles are pathogens. They get around through raw milk, dairy products, uncooked egg products, or with ice cream for example is there, cooked meat, rice, bivalves, i.e. things like clams and mussels, uh, these tend to concentrate the toxins, uh, especially in areas where there's a high level of uh, fecal contamination, like in estuaries, where there's a high population. They take the toxins in from the feces and actually concentrate it within their shells. Salad vegetables and fruit, salmon and trout in vacuum packs. Sources of physical hazards include raw ingredients, maintenance operatives, buildings, packaging materials, equipment, pests, notice boards, pest control activities, food handlers and visitors and there's more, cleaning activities, food containers, sabotage. Uh, there's some graphical representations above of the different types of physical hazards. Sources of chemical hazards. Uh, these could be present in raw materials, in pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, fertilizers, especially used on vegetables, metals uh, that could be present in fish and vegetables, uh, especially heavy metals in coastal areas where mining activities have taken place uh, near the coast. And this does, this does give rise to high metallic contents of things like chromium, and cadmium and zinc etc. Antibiotics and hormones uh, from meat, allergens of which there are 14 different types, natural toxins from different foods, industrial chemicals, contamination during processing could include fumes from diesel fumes, petrol fumes, fumes during uh, the processing system. This is why, well, for example, with transport, transport should always be at the opposite end to production. Cleaner chemicals, pesticides, allergens, again, excess additives, and migration from packaging, for example, uh, with clean film. Uh, there's, the jury is still out on whether or not clean film uh, it does cause a problem with uh, packing foods and then cooking the foods in situ and they say that it's possible that the chemicals from the uh, the sticky bit, the the clingy bit if you like, actually gets into the food itself. Okay, key points for that section, we looked at the biological, physical and chemical hazards relevant to food safety. Now let's go on to Model 3, Prerequisite Programs. And the aim of this unit is to introduce delegates, to introduce you to prerequisite programs. And the learning outcomes by the end of this unit, you will be able to explain the relationship between HACCP and prerequisite programs, provide examples of prerequisite programs, describe the importance of management commitment to implement HACCP, and to provide leadership and resources, and explain the importance of approved suppliers and supplier assurance. Okay, so let's have a look at the prerequisites first of all. Now we're only on obviously part three, but still let's have a look at what the prerequisites are. They are the good hygiene practices a business must have in place before implementing HACCP. And these are management commitment and adequate resources. After prerequisites, we've got prerequisite programs. Um, there's quite a few here, but let's go through them. Approved suppliers, i.e. supplier assurance. 
premises and equipment well designed, constructed and maintained. Potable water and ice supplies. Ice come from the same potable water, that, i.e. that means drinking water from the main supply, which has been chlorinated. High standards of personal hygiene. Staff suitably trained. Uh, and it, what it, the law states is that the staff must be trained commensurate with their work activities. So trained equally to the job uh, that they are uh, that they do. Effective cleaning and disinfection. Equipment calibration. Preventative maintenance. There's a few more. Stock rotation. First in, first out. An integrated pest management system. Effective waste management. Labeling, traceability and recall procedures. So the key points, we looked at the relationship between HACCP and prerequisite programs and prerequisites. And examples of prerequisite programs we looked at, which there were quite a few. And the importance of management commitment to implement HACCP and to provide leadership and resources. And the importance of approved suppliers and supplier insurance. Thank you for watching our video. Please take a moment to visit our website by clicking on the link below. We'll see you there.